Hi, this is iGeek you with another video review. Today I got for you the Galaxy GT 240 graphic card for Nvidia. Um, this particular card has 96 uh, stream processors, comes with 512 uh, megabits of uh, uh, DDR5 RAM which is clocked at 180 megahertz. Uh, the core is clocked at um, let me see what is this clock clocked at? Oh, it's clocked at a 550 megahertz. To me, of course, these numbers really mean nothing, you know. Just can it play the game at my uh, resolution level of my uh, LCD or not? So, forgive me if I don't seem too enthusiastic about the numbers. Plus, I don't overclock cards anymore nowadays. Unless I'm really, really desperate, I'll just buy a new card. It's not really worth the time to overclock it. Anyway, back to review. Um, the Galaxy, right? comes with a nice uh, gunmetal type shroud, gunmetal color as you can see. The shroud seems to act also as a EMP uh, shield for the outputs. Looks like it. I mean, it could be just a uh, just a uh, cosmetic, so I wouldn't know. Um, the output of this card is DVI, VGA, and H uh, HDA, <laughs> HDML, <laughs> HDMI. Yeah, uh, sorry about that. Sometimes I go a bit cockeyed about these type of things. Okay, um, card does not require any external power from the PS, uh, PSU. So, um, as you can see, it's a very low power card. You can put it in your HT, uh, HTPCs if you want to. Though it's not that, s it's quite small. Yeah, probably you could fit it in. Not, not this really, uh, uh, what you call that? mini ITX uh, form factor ones, but you know, just normal micro ATX form factor ones. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the maximum power draw for this card is 69 watts, so mm -hmm. just keep that in mind. Uh, the draw for my uh, for my 4850 is about 110, I think 120 watts, so on maximum, not an idle. Idle is another thing. Uh, so yeah, this is basically half the half the um, half the power requirements. But remember that it's just uh, it's half the power requirements is also half the uh, most likely half the processing power and performance. Uh, okay, so what else is there to say about the card? Well, there's nothing much to say. Uh, the card is basically according to the benchmarks I did run. I didn't run. Um, uh, Modern Warfare 4, uh, 2 on it, sorry, not 4, uh, because uh, I didn't have time to set up, I have other things to do, as you can see, I was testing my brother's uh, Intel 800, um, sorry, 80, uh, 80 uh, megabytes uh, drives, Can't, I don't know what model this is exactly, which one it is, but uh, he asked me to test them to see if they were working or not before he takes them back with him, uh, so, I mean, I mean, other than that, I was also was uh, testing out the X1950, uh, which my friend gave me. He said it was supposedly overheating, but when I tested on my system, it didn't, didn't overheat. So, what I'll do for you, uh, you guys in the next video review is I'll um, more or less overclock it, cause the to cause it to overheat more or less, so you can uh, see exactly what the effects of overheating, gra uh, what an overheating graphic card looks like. Huh. <sighs> anyway, so. Um, yeah, the GT2240 uh, is a nice card, and yeah, it can, it's a uh, DirectX 10, 10.1, uh, so you, it can handle the dir most DirectX 11 uh, games. Uh, it does not have the super features of a uh, DirectX 11, like uh, the 5000 series, because, you know, those have a... Uh, does have some really cool stuff. I'll show you later in the benchmarks exactly what's the difference between a hardware DirectX 10 11 a DirectX 11 card and a har hardware DirectX 10.1 card. So, uh, since everyone's been waiting for that, let's go to the benchmarks now. Okay, so I'm uh, recording this with my Senza clip. Anyway, um, I'll be I was using the Uni Unigen benchmark and uh, software to benchmark the uh, uh, GT240 uh, because it's re relatively a new uh, benchmark so there's not there hasn't been any optimizations by NVIDIA or ATI on it yet uh, anyway um, as you can see from the first benchmark this was done in a uh, direct X10 and uh, after, uh, after playing through the whole uh, demo 
it got a score of 453 and an average of uh, 18 frames per second. Okay, so on the next benchmark is running DirectX 11. Um, please note that both benchmarks were run on my screen resolution of 1680 times 1050. Okay, uh, so uh, well, uh, when I finished playing through the demo of the benchmark, it scored a score of uh, 354 with an average frame per second of uh, 14. Uh, yeah, just another note, this was on a Windows 7 64-bit uh, using my uh, CPU, which is a dual-core AMD uh, BE2400 uh, running with 2 gigs of RAM. Okay, in the center of benchmark here, you won't see any uh, scores or uh, points or uh, such as, you just only will see how the uh, GT240 stacks up to the uh, GT260, the 9800, the ATI4850 uh, and the ATI4670. Now just for a quick comparison on the Unigen uh, benchmark, I use my 4850 card uh, on DirectX 10 it scored a uh, average sc it scored on the score of 679 with an average frame rate of 27 on the DirectX 11 uh, uh, benchmark it scored a uh, average score of uh, 675 with a uh, frame rate of 20 uh, tw sorry not 200 ah, that's a bit high 26.8 frames per second so you pretty much can see the ATI card handles uh, DirectX 11 uh, uh, instruction sets pretty well. Okay, so here's the dragon scene rendered in DirectX 10. After this, you'll see the dragon scene rendered again in DirectX 11. So you can see exactly how DirectX 11 uh, hardware renders the same 3D model but with a uh, tessellation in it. Tessellation allows uh, DirectX 11 hardware to create more 3D depth to already a uh, 3D model. Uh, uh, as you can see um, in the video, I, it, was re it was really hard to explain, but basically, it's you, you can almost call it magic. What looks great in the X10 will look fantastic in the Drex 11 hardware. It's just it's just no comparison. So uh, to round it off, what can I say about the Galaxy GT 240? Well, as a card, it is a pretty nice card. Um, if you really want to go for the small size and the low power requirements, that may be the card for you. But you could also opt for ATI 4670, which is basically the, in the same category in performance as that card, uh, as the 240, but cheaper, if I'm not mistaken, at this uh, current price range uh, time. Um, or if you are looking for a card in the same price range as the 240, you might as well go, if you don't mind the higher power requirements and the larger card size, and the fact that it takes up two slots instead of one slot, uh, one slot at the back of your case, uh, you should go for the 4850, which gives you twice the performance. And as you can see, I mean, it really does outperform the 240. So, in, in this case, it's uh, if it was me, if it was me, I would go for a second-hand card if you can get it, like mine. Mine will only cost 150 Malaysian ringgit. Or if you really have to pay retail, you should seriously consider the ATI version, the 4850. Or you want to go low, lower end, no no high power requirements, then the 4670 would do just fine. Both cards, I mean the NVIDIA card and the ATI cards, they all can play uh, Modern Warfare 2, there's no doubt about it. Um, you should be able to play it with very acceptable frame rates at high resolution and high details. If not, you can just kick back the detail level a bit, but I mean, there's not much to kick back. To, uh, Mm, uh, there's nothing much more I can say about it. I mean, I like the car, I like the Nvidia card. I mean, it's a very nice design. But uh, for the type of money I'm paying, I would rather take an ATI card or, like I say, buy it secondhand. So anyway, this is Aggie Q signing off.